Hi everyone, Kamran Nuri here. This video is on rotational kinematics, which talks about rotation of an object around an axis of rotation, like this wheel that is rotating around its symmetry axis passing through its center. The rotational speed can be low like this, or can be high like this. Or rotation can be slowing down like this, or speeding up like this. Let's first formally introduce these concepts and then illustrate with some more animations. Notice that we take the counterclockwise direction as positive and clockwise direction as negative, as it is usually the convention in mathematics. So in order to talk about rotational dynamics, we uh, just review what we had for rotation. Uh, we started with definition of the angle theta if you have a uh, on a circle angle theta radius r and this distance along the circle is s theta is defined by s divided by r it is in radians and theta for the whole circle remember is the whole circumference which is 2 pi r divide by r, and r cancels out, it becomes 2 pi radians, right? That's why we say, oh, circle is 2 pi radians. And also, we call 2 pi radians, we call it also one revolution. Sometimes we, we talk about revolution, and we also call it uh, 360 degrees. Sometimes we talk about degrees, sometimes we talk about revolution, and sometimes we talk about radian. This actually gives you uh, conversion fa factors that you need uh, when you want to convert from revolution to radians or uh, from degrees to radians. And SI units for theta is radians, so the, the standard unit is radian. All right, so this is theta, and then what we did next, we defined angular velocity. This is called angular position, which shows the position on the circle to how many radians are from a fixed position, which is like this point, which is a reference point. And then we uh, define angular velocity, we call it omega, and, uh, omega is defined by uh, d theta over dt. It's a derivative of theta, how fast theta is uh, changing, or rate of change of theta. And something rotating around, it has omega. It shows how fast it's rotating. Uh, or you can say, if, om if omega is a constant, you can say delta theta over delta t, right? And uh, for anything that's rotating, you can calculate omega. Let's say, for the second hand of the clock, how much is omega? Can you calculate that? The unit of uh, omega is radians per second. So how, how would you calculate the average omega for the second hand of clocks? Any ideas? Just take t to some random number. Yeah, then take some delta t and corresponding delta theta and divide. So, give me an example. T equals one, theta is pi over 30. Pi over 30. 30 seconds? Yeah, so in 30 seconds, the second hand goes from 12 to 6, right? So, how much does it turn? Half a circle, which is pi, right? So, the uh, omega is delta theta over delta t. Um, uh, which is, uh, for, for 30 seconds, pi over 30. If you do pi over 30, what do you get? This point 105 or something? Radians per second. That's the angular speed or angular velocity of the second hand. You can, you can calculate that for the minute hand. It's going a lot slower, right? And for the hour hand, here are some more examples. This wheel is rotating with angular speed of 1 radian per second. Since 1 revolution is 2 pi radians, 
This wheel takes about 6 seconds to rotate one complete round. Now it's going faster at 2 radians per second. And since it is rotating counterclockwise, we say its angular velocity is positive 2 radians per second. Now it's going even faster at positive 3 radians per second. Now it is rotating at negative 3 radians per second because it is rotating in clockwise direction. Now at 5.2 radians per second. Now at negative 6 radians per second. Now the angular velocity is positive 9 radians per second. And so on and so forth. Uh, omega is how fast something is going around or rotating around. And then we talked about angular acceleration. Average angular acceleration we denoted by alpha. This is alpha. Denoted by alpha with the bar over it. With this is average angular acceleration, I should add. Average ag angular acceleration is delta omega over delta t. How much this omega changes over time? And its unit is radian per second squared. It's radian per second per second, right? Radian per second squared. And it shows how fast uh, it is changing. For example, for the second hand of the clock, how much is alpha? Zero. Why? Yeah, delta omega is zero. Omega is constant for uh, the second hand, right? So there's no angular acceleration for the second hand. It goes at constant angular speed or constant angular velocity. So the angular acceleration is zero. Very good. So uh, alpha is uh, equal to zero for clock hand. So, you see, this is definition of the theta, this is definition of omega, and this is definition of uh, alpha average, and then for instantaneous value of alpha, alpha is, uh, for instantaneous value, is d omega over dt. It's limit of delta omega over delta t, when delta t goes to zero, in calculus we call it derivative, derivative of omega with respect to t. And if you look at these formulas, they look very much uh, similar to the linear case. We had position, which was x, and then we defined velocity, which was dx over dt, or derivative of x, how fast x is changing. And then we defined acceleration equal to how fast velocity is changing, rate of change of velocity. So it is all the same. Any questions so far? Notice that in the previous animations, the angular velocities were all constants. Therefore, the angular accelerations were all zero. Now we will have some examples with non-zero angular acceleration and different values of initial angular velocities. First, we will have a couple of examples with zero initial angular velocities, where the wheel starts from rest. This one has an angular acceleration of one radian per second squared. Notice that the angular velocity omega increases by about 1 radian per second each second, or 1 radian per second squared. This one has an angular acceleration of negative 1 radian per second squared, so it will rotate in the negative direction. Now this example has an initial angular velocity of negative 4 radians per second, but a positive angular acceleration. Therefore, initially it will rotate in clockwise direction and slows down, stops, and then changes direction of rotation and then goes faster and faster. This time it has the same situation with a larger initial angular speed, so it will take longer to stop. Watch.
Now it has the same negative angular velocity but a larger positive angular acceleration, so it will stop faster. Watch. And another similar example. Now this one has a positive initial angular velocity omega but a negative angular acceleration alpha so it will rotate counterclockwise first then stops and goes clockwise. Now if you're wondering why the wheel seems to be stopping and showing some interesting patterns you need to watch my next video which I made just for fun to see these patterns while explaining why this happens. Now in the classroom, we are going to show the analogy between linear and angular kinematics. Linear motion and uh, angular. Linear and angular. For the position, we call linear position, you had x, right? And we have angular position, which we call a tape, right? Where on the circle the object is, or in which orientation the object is, if something is rotated. And then we have velocity, which we call v, and it is dx over dt. Here we have omega, which is d theta over dt, how fast the position changes in each case, right? And then we have acceleration, a, which is dv over dt. And here we have alpha, which is d omega over dt. They are very similar to each other. And because of these are similar, then we had some uh, kinematics formula for constant acceleration motion. We can have exact same thing on this side. For example, the kinematics, a constant, we had these formulas. Remember, v equal to v naught plus a t when a is constant and delta x. Remember these formulas? Now, in, uh, on this side, for kinematics of rotation, when alpha is constant, and put that in parenthesis, this is only uh, true is uh, a is constant, right? When alpha is constant, we have the same thing here. Can you translate this to this side? See, everything is corresponding to each other, right? Can you translate that? What do we have here for instead of this? Yeah, yeah omega equals to? Omega naught plus alpha times t. See, instead of v, you put omega. Instead of a, you put alpha. Time is the same. Right? What about this one? Yeah, position. Delta theta equals to omega naught t one half alpha t squared. Right? And this one becomes omega squared equal to omega naught squared plus two alpha delta theta. You have all the kinematics the same way exactly. So we can get a lot of different questions about you know how kinematics work works. Right? So I have the exact same equations. Because these original equations are exactly the same. And now if something is rotating and has distance to the uh, center, it is also moving. There's a relationship between V and omega. This is very important in this uh, chapter. The relationship between V and omega. 
if you have this, you see, s equal to r theta, if you cross multiply, then you take derivative of both sides, and here we get ds over dt. Here r is constant, so we get d theta over dt, right? And then what is ds over dt? Here, how fast it is moving, right? That's the speed. The this, this speed v is equal to r times, what is this? d theta over dt is omega, right? And v is equal to r omega. This is very, very important. If uh, anything that's going around circle, it has a speed. It, it is speed and its omega, or angular speed, are related with this formula. v is equal to r omega. And also, if you take another derivative, what do you get? If you take the derivative of that, you get the dv over dt is equal to r d omega over dt. And what is d, dv over dt? Acceleration. Is it the total acceleration? Yeah, this is, this is the speed, right? This is derivative of the speed, means derivative of the magnitude of the velocity. Uh, in general, acceleration has two components. One is toward the center, one is a, a tangent. This is the tangential acceleration. We call it A T. Equals to R, and this is R. The tangential acceleration is equal to R alpha. So this is, this is called tangential. acceleration. And of course it's radius, this is angular acceleration. Okay? And that's the radius. So we have this formula. This is also very important in this chapter. The relationship between linear and rotational variables. All right? Also, because something is going at the speed and the velocity magnitude, the velocity direction changes, it has a centripetal acceleration too. Remember the centripetal acceleration? Uh, we call it radial or centripetal. So A radial is V squared over R, right? We had that as well. We calculated that. The radial acceleration is V squared over R, and because V is R omega, you can write it in terms of omega. If, if you write uh, r omega squared divided by r, uh, radial acceleration is also r squared omega squared over r becomes r omega squared. We have this, we have that, this is the radial, this is tangential acceleration, this is uh, speed, um, which is related to r omega, and if you want, the positions are related like that by definition. So we need to understand those rolling uh, objects. Which one goes faster? We need to use this. So be careful and uh, remember. Thank you for watching. See the next video in this playlist for rotational dynamics. Also, if you like this video, please share and subscribe.